What's up? This is Maps with Trent. That's all I got. <laughs> um, so today, the idea is, yes, it is indeed about Geode, uh, which is a underutilized um, modality, I guess, of Just Friends. Um, it's I2C only, so you have to have a Crow or a Teletype to have access to it. Um, but what it does is some interesting things that I think are maybe worth exploring more generally. Um, the, the beautiful thing here is it's something that I wrote, you know, a few years ago and I've barely touched. And I think that most people have barely touched because it's pretty complex. Um, and like maybe a little opaque the way it's written about. So hopefully, um, we can kind of work through some ideas and explore what it can do, and then hopefully maybe make some actual music with it. Um, maybe some... even, a, like, tuned percussion stuff, or maybe something like this. Um, but yeah, so the general idea... Um, and at one point I'm going to bring up the, the actual documentation so I actually know what I'm doing. Um, but the general idea is it's just a method um, for... Um, triggering like a sequence of envelopes. Um, so in the way that Just Friends in shape mode um, is is really just creating envelopes of different kinds, LFOs and envelopes. Um, and Geode is basically just, it's like a trigger sequencer that sits behind that. Um, so you can create uh, either, you can create like sequences of triggers that aren't necessarily the same uh, rate as the envelope itself. So you can do all of the kind of frequency division stuff and like trigger skipping that you can with Just Friends in Shape Mode regularly with an external trigger source, but this allows you to kind of queue up um, N triggers at a given rate. And that rate is relative to a clock signal. Um, so it's kind of designed to be clocked um, via I2C. So today we're going to be setting the clock into Crow um, and using that as the kind of uh, the main kind of rhythmic driver for the system. Um, and oh yeah, that, someone was asking about showing, demonstrating a, a telex input um, like in this kind of context. And so if we get there, if there's enough time, um, I have one somewhere around here. I'll, I'll try and dig it out and uh, we can plug it in and see what happens. Um, kind of hopefully get some more hands-on control over uh, over the parameters of Geode. Because at the moment, we're, we're going to have to do it all with code. We don't, we don't really have access to um, a physical interface, except for the two CV inputs. Um, so, without further ado, um, let's get started. I want to just quickly plug in some sound and make sure I, we can actually hear stuff because I'm not sure anything's working right now. Um, I'm just going to patch in a just a sine wave um, LF, uh, a filter self-oscillating and see if we can hear it, which we cannot. So it's this channel. Right? Ah. This is going to be really loud now. Okay. Um, sorry, my speaker is hiding down there somewhere. You might be surprised to know that my sound system in here is like a portable Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> it's pretty shameful. Still no sound. Am I plugged into the wrong channel? <laughs> well, this is embarrassing. <laughs> That should really be working.
Oh. You can talk amongst yourselves for a second. <laughs> This is definitely running. Oh, this cold Mac is not attached to a power cable. Love that. Can I do this? Blind? I hope so. Okay. The... Let me know how that sound level is. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to load up uh, a web browser so we can look at the documentation. <laughs> so it's a, I guess it's a bit opaque at the moment as well because it's um the only document that talks about geode and like the synthesis stuff beyond just the documentation in crow is related to teletype um so i guess that probably makes things a little um even more difficult to to read or be than they need to be um but here we are this is probably gonna be too small um this is just on the Whimsical Routes website. You can see the uh, the page there if you want to have a look at it. Um, but basically, here we go. Synthesis. That's the first mode we've, we've kind of we've found a bit of that with uh, with other streams so far in the series. Um, but what we're talking about today is this thing called Geode, um, and the name comes from the idea that. Uh, I always think of envelopes and rhythms as kind of um, like layers and um, I was just kind of like really into the idea of like layered rocks and like striations of different kinds of rock on different levels. I don't know. It's been a few years since I came up with this stuff so that's, that's the best I've got for you. Um, but here we go. All right. A rhythmic engine for polymetric and polyphasic patterns. Um, it's going to be clocked. So we'll do that. I think we'll do it. It says via teletype here, but we'll do it via crow. Um, time and intern controls maintain their standard free running influence. Okay, so what this says to me is shape mode. We're going to use this just friends right here. Shape mode is going to be... Oh, we're in shape. Cool. Um, sorry, geode is going to be exactly like shape mode, unless you send it extra messages from Crow. So that's kind of a beginning point. We can start from there. Um, and then everything else is about kind of is transforming an individual trigger into a sequence of triggers. Um, OK, so a combination of standard trigger uh, with repeat, count, and subdivision. Um, so the repeat count is going to make a number of envelopes, and the subdivision is going to set the rhythmic relation of those to the master time base. Okay, and then transient sustained cycle chooses how the repeats are modified over time. Okay, so this is cool. So sustain is going to give us um, the first envelope is going to be full volume, and then each one after it's going to decrease in level. 
this is all somewhat from memory, but well, I, I think this is correct. Um, cycle. Ooh. Rhythmic undulation to the envelope level. All right. I think transient is actually just going to be equal. They're all going to say the same level. Um, boy, although it probably should say that explicitly. I should rewrite all of this stuff one day. Um, there is too many things to do. Maybe someone will get inspired after this and need to articulate it. Ha <laughs> very funny. Okay, um, so let's get started. We'll leave this hiding behind my head. Um, <laughs> that's funny how you can see through. Cool. I'll leave it right there. Great. So, um, there is a... Oh, no, everything is in front of everything else. It's very confusing. There's a new druid, um, which we'll get to in a second. Um, this was just a test. Oh, no. Um, usually I have my escape and caps lock keys flipped for using Vim, but um, it's not like that because I'm using like the regular old desktop environment. It's awful. So watch me, prepare to watch me struggle for the next uh, few, next two hours. Okay. Um, let's, let's start with a fresh Lua file. And we're going to write a crow script like we've been doing a lot in a lot of these. Um, so we're going to go, we're going to put it in Bowery. I keep it in a very specific place, but you can literally put it wherever you want. Um, this is just, it's just my, my little way of doing things. Geode.lua. Okay, we have a new file and I'm going to save it. So there's nothing here. Um, so an exploration of just friends geode. Wow. I don't like the word mode. It has a, a terrible connotation. Let's just call it geode. I like that. It's it's an it's a thing. Okay. Um, and then that yes. Okay. I'm relearning all my she uh, keyboard shortcuts. So this is Druid version 1.0. Big shout out to. Simon and CS Bolling and Jay Wiles. I don't think any of them are here, but they helped add a bunch of really cool stuff um, so that Druid is way more useful. Um, I haven't made a post about it yet, but um, it's definitely... It's online and you can just get it with pip install. Like, I'll show you. You, you write pip3 ins install user upgrade monome dash druid okay my python installation is broken but it does still successfully work and say it's up to date requirement already satisfied cool that's all um you shouldn't see all of that junk when, when you do it so we're connected the cool thing my like number one favorite feature is is this whoa Okay, so it just like gives you like auto completion that uh, that knows about your file system. So you don't have to like know exactly where you are. You can kind of like if you, if you go back, you type R to like run something. If you type um, how does this work? If you just hit tab, R space and then tab, it'll give you a list of wherever you are. Um, so. I want to look in Bowery, and then it'll give me this list of things, and I can see if I can see, I'm scrolling with the up-down keys, um, and I can just say geode, hit enter, and it'll run it. Um, so that's that. I didn't save this, that's why we didn't see. Um, nope. There we go, an exploration of just friends geode. Cool, so we're, we're in business. The really cool thing, or another really cool thing, is now I can just type the letter R. I don't have to keep typing in the full uh, file path. I just hit R, and it will, whatever the, the last file I actually gave it a file path for, it just remembers that, and it'll just use that from now on. So we shouldn't have to do any more endless up-scrolling today. 
We do have one, one more thing that I'll tell you. There's only three real features. You've seen two. The third one is you can now scroll um, in the history. So a nice thing in case you wanted to see what you wrote a little while back. All right. Um, so as per usual, let's start with our init function. And this is going to have... We're going to turn on um, JF mode. And this is going to basically put it into what would usually we'd think of being synthesis mode, but this actually lets us put it into geode as well. Um, which, whether it's in geode or synthesis, is purely de decided by whether the sound shape is in sound or shape. Sound is synthesis and shape is geode. So that'll get us there. So why don't we start with that, and then let's just look at how it behaves without any extra commands. Um, okay, so... Cool, we're still cycling because um, it's in cycle mode, but it should be different now, so, um, at least partially. If we go to synthesis, it'll definitely be... Yeah. Oh. Is that not working? Oh, okay. It seems like it didn't execute this for some reason. Well, hopefully there isn't some bigger issue than I'm aware of. Oh, that just exited? Yeah. Great. Okay, so we're successfully talking between the two. So let's try it out. Um, how should we do this? I'm going to dreadfully underuse this Just Friends today, and I'm just going to use it as a trigger source. Um, so I'm just going to make pulses in shape mode, and we'll trigger all six envelopes that will happen together. Okay, so this is in cycle mode, but let's put it um in transient. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, so let's um I'm gonna patch this just into um let's just use a mangrove as a sound source just for now. Um before we start getting into like more rhythmic stuff. Um and we'll just control the uh, the amplitude. Is that a shorter problem? Yeah. We'll control the amplitude with the air control. Okay, so what's happening is there is, um, yeah, cool. In this mode, these triggers here are basically getting cut off. So usually they would, there'd be like a, um, I think this, the triggers would get skipped. So maybe what I was saying before isn't quite right, but we'll get there. Um, so because I have, as I turn up the rate of the kind of driving clock, um, you'll see these kind of turn down so low that they barely even begin. Um, we could kind of do it with a, by changing the wave shape so it's a really fast attack. Um, so we get more of it. Mm. 
but yeah, so that's that's kind of one thing. But we'll um, we'll see what happens next. What happens if we do this? All right. So uh, let's actually do something. Um, so I'm gonna go back to this documentation. Let's take another look. All right, so JF.tick sets the underlying time base. You can set a tempo, or uh, we can send a repetitive tap tempo. Okay, so why don't we start by giving it just a tempo? Um, anybody that knows me knows that I'm obsessed with um, footwork and juke music. So let's give it the, let's just give it a BPM and let's say 160. Um, so what that should do is it's just going to have, um, Just Friends is now has a, basically its own clock running inside of it at, a, at 160 BPM. Um, we can give it any BPM we want in, they have to be like whole, whole numbers, integers. Um, but you can see here, um, it has to be at least 49. Anything less than 49 will be treated as a, a regular clock, uh, in which case we'll need to send it on a, like on a metro. Um, so we could do that from Crow with, with using a metro, um, and that way, that way we could have the clock be dynamically controllable from Crow, um, but also we could, rather than have have it work like that, we could use a physical jack into Crow, um, which is a which is a pulse, like how we're we're currently doing that from Just Friends just to send in the triggers, but we could also use an LFO or whatever to clock Crow and then Crow would send the tick message over. It's a little convoluted, but it's a it's kind of I mean modular is often a little convoluted, so that's the way it is for now. Um, so yeah. There should be a clock running at the moment. And now we have, ooh, yeah, QT. All right, we'll get to that. Now we have the same main two commands. Um, we have jfvox and jf.note. These are slightly different um, in Crow. They're not, they don't have the exact same names. These are, um, it's this play voice and play note. So vox is play voice and note is play note. Um, we kind of opted for a more human readable form for Crow, and I think that's kind of the style of the of the Crow system in general. It tries to be a little bit more English language. Apparently I put sugar in this coffee yesterday. That was a very stupid idea. Okay, so let's try and send it a command. So at the moment we're just we're triggering everything like this, but let's take it out. Um, let's just send a message directly. J I A dot J F dot play voice because I want to specifically target the first channel. So one is going to be channel number one. Uh, we could say zero to do all of them, but let's just do one. Um, then the next is pitch, di oh, this says pitch divs and, oh, yes, the help. It says pitch underscore divs and level underscore repeats. So pitch and level are synthesis mode and divs and repeats are geode mode. So let's say, what are the divisions? Um, we're gonna divide the global measure. Um, so that's the 160 BPM time base. Um, we're gonna divide it by divs so let's say four to do quarter notes. So that should give us like something like that speed. Um, and then repeat is the number of times to re-trigger. Um, okay, right. So, and here you'll see zero means no repeats, but you'll still get a note. Um, whereas one will be a repeat. So it's the initial plus a repeat. So let's try three repeats, which should give us four triggers in total. Mm. 
Well, this is interesting. Um, oh, okay. This is something I didn't take into account, and I sh probably should have tested this before we began. Um, put this back to 160, it's correct. The issue, and we'll, we'll, we should figure something out beyond just the hack I'm going to use right now. Um, what's happening here is Play Voice is sending notes as if they are pitches, um, and it uses Teletype's um, data type which basically says that 1,683 is one octave. So when I'm typing here the number one, that actually gets translated into one times... Well, I think it's that. That's the number. Um, so we're actually sending a very large number. Um, what we can do here is we can just divide it by that. So let's... And it's going to be the same thing for divs because it expects a voltage. Uh, let's after we do this, we'll make a little helper function so we don't have to worry about this anymore. Um, and what did we say? Three. Cool. Uh, Sixteen thirty-eight point three. Yes. All right. Can you all hear that? All right, ba 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 ba. It's working at least on a very basic level. That's great. So what's happening is the note, uh, the the pitch here is getting the pitch. The envelope that Just Friends is creating is getting re-triggered at the clock frequency um, multiplied by four um, with like three extra times. So. This number four, we could instead say eight. And that sounded like one long one, but that's because it was, um, what's the word? Uh, they all kind of blended together, I think. So if we go this way. So what that's doing is it's saying, break up my 160 beats per minute bar into eight sections or is it maybe it's a beat anyway there's like eight basically eight subdivisions of the the time window and then i'm repeating i'm basically having four at that rate um we can use so the, like, the slowest i think you can go is one and So that's basically 160 beats a minute. And we can get that repetitively by giving, by passing in a negative number as the number of repeats. So this allows Just Friends to be like a, a tight tempo clock. Um, well, a tempo clock envelope. It's not just a pulse, um, which we can demonstrate by kind of changing the parameters. It'll give us a different feel. Um, okay, let's stop that from being infinite. And let's, let's uh, start working on our, our script again so that we can hopefully get uh, somewhat further with it. Okay, so we're going to transpose the stuff we just talked about into this file so that we don't have to keep typing it. Um, I'm going to use one trick that I've been kind of doing a lot of recently. I'm going to say j equals ii.jf. And that means it's basically just an alias so that I can now, anything, anytime I want to talk to just friends, I can just type the letter j. Um, it just makes things a lot cleaner. If, even if it's a little bit, uh, you really have to pay attention to this line. Um, uh, 
Okay, um, so we said j dot tick, and we'll, we'll keep 160 for now, we'll change it and we'll get into the like clock stuff later. Um, that's good, but that's going to give us a time base, and now let's make a little helper function um, so that we can deal with this uh, data type issue. Um, and I guess my question is, do we want to... We could just make a wrapper. So I'm going to make, yeah, I'm going to make a wrapper for a function, a function called voice and a function called note. Um, and the, we're going to kind of put the data type stuff inside of that. You could do it as a, a simple function as well. Why don't we start with that? We can do them both actually. It's great. So a voice takes a channel, um, divs and repeats. Um, and this is going to be translated into play voice, chan, divs divided by 1638.3, and repeats divided by 1638.3. I'm sorry for that magic number, it's just how things are. Rather than use that, we can make another function, um, which is um, v to i, meaning vault to int and this is just to kind of show you that you could kind of abstract away that number um, but realistically it doesn't help very much um, but we'll work with it so return vaults divided by our magic number. So yeah, that just kind of abstracts it so you don't have to think about it anymore. And we wanted one more function, right, which is note. So this is going to be... The difference here is note doesn't require a channel. It dynamically allocates it. And I think this could get really interesting with rhythm. Um, it's basically going to be the same thing as voice, but uh, this first argument doesn't need to be there. Okay, um, so that's the, the kind of start starting point. Just to prove everything's working, let's begin. We'll, we'll start with a um, voice one, and what are we, what was that thing? We said four and three. So that's going to be um, four envelopes. Four triggers in a single beat. It's vague, I'm sorry, but let's let's roll with it. Ooh, I love that. R. Okay, so those four bada da buzz um hopefully just proved that this is actually working. Great. Okay, so um why don't we what should we do? Should we hook it up to... Should we hook up some sounds and kind of start trying to write something? Yeah. Um. Okay, so um, this is true both of synthesis mode and geode mode. You can treat crow or teletype as a configuration only. Um, it get, it's, you, when you configure it, you're going to hear some things. But one really cool thing here is if I now use this second just friends to trigger this first channel, it should give us the same set of repeats. This is very strange to me. So I should be able to write voice one, four, three. Okay, I'm uns unsure why that's happening.
you know, I think I might be incorrect here. Um, it seems as though uh, Just Friends will just kind of, even in geode mode, it'll still respond to triggers in a pretty standard way. Let's not get too hung up on that. Um, instead, let's start sequencing something. Why don't we try, instead of just setting... Oh my god. Instead of setting a tempo directly, let's try and clock it. Um, so, to do that... I swear, every time we do a stream, I'm always like, where are the long patch cables? And they're, they're always somewhere. Hiding from me. Cool. So, um, I'm just going to do the classic just sending a clock into Crow's first input. Um, so, we're going to use one of the input modes we talked about last week, um, which is going to look something like input one dot mode going to use change mode because we just want to look for a trigger. Um, that's it. That's all we have to do. Cool. Okay. Um, we need to I'm like dealing with the keyboard working different to normal as well, but we persevere. Uh, does it just count? We might have to change the directionality here. I'm, I'm not totally sure. Okay, so we're going to send a tick to Just Friends, but so you can see what's happened here. So we basically we turn on input the input into change mode, um, and then we've defined the event that happens whenever a change is detected on the jack. Um, and when that change occurs, we are going to call j.tick. So just friends.tick. Um, you do or it will double hit. Thank you. Okay, um, does anybody remember the, the order of arguments? We can, instead, we can use a table, right? Yeah. So this is like the alternate, well, it's one of two different alternate um, syntaxes for this input configuration. We basically just want to look for a rising change. So. This looks a bit strange. This is calling input one as a function and passing it a table, which has, yeah, okay, I think I got that. That's the same, right? Yeah, cool. Um, so, and we're basically like giving it named parameters. So the mode is called change and the direction is rising. So that means that this function down here will only get called whenever the trigger goes high, and when it goes low, it'll just ignore it. That sounds great. So what we need to do is send it a different argument. So why don't we start by saying four? So what this, is, what this means is we need to send four pulses um, to equal one bar. Or is it one beat? We'll find out very quickly. Um, I'm going to turn this up a bit. And now... I, yeah. Does anybody know how to use a computer? Okay. That seems like it was too, too perfect. Okay, great. So what's happening here is as I change the frequency of this Just Friends, um, it's just changing the time base of those repeats. But it's not changing the envelope shape. It's only changing the like sequence of rhythm. Um, so that's the kind of beginning. Um, let's leave it kind of...
that seems good. If you want to do clock divisions and stuff, you can you can do it by changing uh, j.tick. And you could, if you if we set it instead to say two, it's gonna basically divide this the time in half. Oh, I need to change it in the callback. There we go. So it's, it's the other way. If we go to two, it means that uh, it's going to double the speed of all the triggers. So let's go back to four, which I, I think it gives us a nice kind of balance between a visual and... I guess it takes a, it takes a moment to recognize it because it has to actually receive some triggers before Just Friends can update. Okay, this is a long roundabout. Let's keep it moving. Um, so, why don't we start, why don't we do something else in this change, right? Why don't we say, we'll keep a counter, we'll start it at zero, it's a little strange for Lua, but let's do it, um, and then every time we get a clock pulse from a driving clock, we're going to, well not every time, but we are going to increment that, that value. So this is just going to be a number that counts up every time we get a clock from just friend from the, the non-geo just friends. And then what I want to say is if the counter equals let's say sixteen. Um, well, we don't need these parens because we're in Lua. Cool. Then. Uh, two things are going to happen. One, we're going to reset the counter to zero, and I guess we should do it to one, right? Um, and we're going to make a note. So let's say voice, we'll just do that same one we've been using. So four, three, um, and we need to close that conditional and this might be off by one I think I think it's a little quick So, um, should both be zero? You're probably right, they should both be zero. Well, they should both be one, who knows. Okay, so what's happening is every time this occurs, every time this trigger happens, we start counting. Um, and every 16th one, we're going to create a sequence of four notes. Um, that's that's cool, that's exciting, whatever. Um, but this gets a lot more interesting when we bring in more than one sound. I think the whole thing about Geode is that you have this like overarching structure of a like tempo base, but then you get to subdivide it in different ways. So let's make a patch. I'm going to use... Um, to kind of make a, a little duophonic playing off each other thing, we're going to use a second mangrove um, patched up with a different sound. That's cool, that's exciting, whatever. That's actually pretty much what I always say. What's up, fight? Lovely to see you. Um, okay. I'm just going to use this cold mac here as a... Um, as a crossfader, um, just so we can kind of hear both of these channels um, without having to kind of run two long cables. <laughs> That's actually the main driver, is I didn't want to have to find another long cable, because we all know how that goes. 
So let's start by sending that same. Um, we're going to use voice two, but let's say um, let's divide it in six and let's send five repeats, which will give a total of six envelopes. Me, it's a little quick. Why don't? Oh, we can just slow it down here. Hey, wow. Well. Okay, so pretty quick, we're gonna get into some polyrhythmic stuff. But I wanna. Okay, so let's use a more traditional envelope, and we'll make it a little longer. Okay, cool. So. This is two voices. I think, um, let's do something. Should we do something more exciting than this? Why not? Um, what might be interesting is if we, I'm going to change tick to be eight. So that's going to slow down our sequence um, and give us more resolution uh, at more resolution in terms of what these two numbers really mean, right? So at the moment we're dividing this first one into four, but let's divide it into eight segments. And then we'll, we'll divide this one, leave it at six. Um, let's see what happens there. Okay. This is somewhat interesting, I guess. Um, but why don't we start adding some other things into our sequence? So what about if the counter equals eight, we say halfway through, um, um, is this script controlling their frequency relationship or is that being done from the front panel? That's being done from the front panel still. All we're doing right now is sequence is basically creating these sequence of repeats. So we can. So I just turned intone all the way up, and now the second channel, the higher pitched one, is much shorter. But we could also slow it down with counter like that. Okay, so I want to make one more at the halfway point, and I want to put it on. Um, the second voice, which is the high pitch, but I want to change the division. So we've been we've used eight and six. Why don't we use seven? Um, well maybe that's going to be even even too strange for us. Let's say ten and let's give it uh, three repeats. So this is an idea. I like it. It's nice. But we should do, let's do more. Let's use, let's use three sisters to make three pings, basically. So we can kind of create some percussion, even if it's not the most, not most exciting, but 
it'll be something. I should do these in sequence. Uh, so many cables. in. So I basically I'm attaching the envelopes directly to the inputs of Three Sisters. Then we're going to mix that into Cold Mac. And I've just dialed in uh, the quality control on Three Sisters so that it's just before self-oscillation. And then hopefully when we start hitting it with some notes, it'll, uh, it'll start giving us some sounds. So let's say voice four. So that's for the four and jack. That should be the low channel. It'll be the lowest note. Um, let's say These are a little annoying to me now. <laughs> so let's uh I wanna reconfigure this. I'm gonna say let's treat them as actual numbers. So when um Okay, so I've just kind of reconfigured this little. So here we have uh, incrementing counter, and then basically we kind of um, conditional rhythmic events. Um, and I'm gonna remove this last case here. We don't need them to be like that. Um, So I'm going to use, let's do channel four, channel five, and channel six. And I'm going to set them all to be three divisions. Okay, so three is cool because it was a triplet. And let's say two repeats, so that's going to be three triplets, which should create half a bar. Do we have music yet? So currently we're triggering, triggering, triggering all of the 
the kind of tuned percussion sounds together. Um, but why don't we start them all together, but we can have them phase out differently. So here we're doing triplets, but why don't we instead, we're going to do three, uh, five, and seven, just to make things extra strange. It's prime divisions of a, of a scale, a scale, a bar. How would you set up a pro LFO relative to the geode time base or the incoming clock? If you set a BPM directly, it's not too difficult, but doing it from a clock is a little more challenging. Uh, the sound sources right now, it's just uh, three sisters and two mangroves. Um, you can probably tell which is which. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, I mean, this is one thing. Um, LFO, let's think about that. How do we do an LFO from a clock? Uh, I would probably keep a timer, basically keep a running average of how quickly these ticks are coming in. Um, and you can use the function called time. That will report the number of milliseconds since Crow booted up. So, I mean, occasionally it wraps, like every couple hours, but um, that should work. Um, so you would just like store it and compare it to the previous one. You could you could save maybe a, an array of three, uh, three or four, and kind of average. Um, and on top of that, you could add a reset into an a, like into the output that is connected to the LFO's ASL. I think we can do this. We can do this pretty quickly, actually. Say, um, this is a little sidetrack. I hope people aren't put off by it. Let's just do this. Then I'm going to take a little break and then we'll continue. Um, ooh, with quantize. Quantize is really cool. We'll get to that. Okay, so. I can't use time, so I have to use like. Then 
there's a much nicer, you could do it like functionally and like ro uh, rotate this table, but I don't know how to do it. So I'm just going to use like um, last time x equals 1. Oh my god. How do I, how do I escape this? Uh, equals 1. Then we're going to say last time. sound like, yeah, that whole thing. Thumbs up for hell of a tangent. All right, let me see if I can figure it out then. Um, we can't just grab the time, we need to grab the time relative to the last time. So... New time equals time minus... Last time, last time, x. Wait, we don't need to do an average. Let's just do one. It's way easier. Then I don't have to worry about any of this junk. Okay, cancel that. Let's try again. Last time equals time minus. stops, like the, the phase changes. Okay, so this is not quite right. It's like very regular, but I feel like when you do this, I'm getting sidetracked. Cool. Um, this is not working. numbers so big. It's because it's since Crow booted. Um, so since the modular got turned on essentially. Even when we reload as much as the, the Lua environment restarts, but the whole module doesn't restart. So all the DAX and everything stay active. By this and I don't know what's going on. Um, so I might I might not do this, not, I might give up on this. We can make an LFO just restart. Maybe is that satisfying enough? Um, 
I think that should do it. This will probably be too reg like too often, but uh, let's try it. Let's do it next time. Um, I'm going to take a break for two little minutes very quickly, then we'll come back and we'll make some actual music, we hope.
something with the new with firmware but it's uh I think the reality is I forgot how to use it <laughs> um which should be something that's less of an issue but let's see back. Um, I think there's two things I want to do. One is explore dynamic allocation. I think that could be really interesting. Um, and we'll just use a, sim a simple loop. So so far, um, so far what we've been doing has been very much like saying, okay, this channel's gonna do this, this channel's gonna do that. And that's cool, and you can do all kinds of like, fa like polyphasic stuff, and having things follow different rhythms and use different divisions, but you're still fundamentally sequencing when a, when a set of notes is going to occur. Um, so I think that, oh yeah, absolutely. I just got what you were saying about the, the last time and time thing. You are totally correct. Yeah, you have to remember the actual time, not the, the difference. Um, so yeah, you can do all of that kind of phasing stuff. And that's great um, if you want to like program sequences like that. If you want to um, write rhythms in terms of Kind of rhythmic chunks um, but one way that you can kind of make perhaps interesting um, patterns and, and maybe things that you won't think about doing things that are a little more abstract and are a little bit more focused on um, conceptual stuff um, is we're gonna we're gonna use the the note command rather than voice so Note is going to dynamically allocate voices. Um, and so we're not going to be able to say, okay, this sequence happens on this instrument, or in this case, like this tone. Um, but we are instead going to kind of like let them be kind of dealt with by the system itself. Um, I'm going to add one more sound, which is going to be another three sisters, but I'm going to put it into a wave folder, to, which I'm going to use the cold Mac um, to do. Should we just do like... I might just do the full wave rectifier, just because the crease circuit's probably going to be like way too loud and over the top. But we can try that if we really want. How is, is this going to be... started, I'm just going to trigger um, this particular voice itself. It's not really in key, but we'll hopefully get it there um, a little later on. So, um, Cool, let's... Oh my god... 
Here we are, the right window. Save this. I'm gonna make a new file. Bowery um, Dynageode, as in dynamic. So now I'm gonna need to give it a new. Look at that, autocomplete. Love it. In this case, I'm gonna turn off everything. Um, turn off this, and I'm actually we're gonna tr we're gonna start again. So let's let's get rid of this counter. Um, and let's yeah. Why don't we just like remove everything to start with? So this now. We're back in, uh... Oh, okay, so... <laughs> this is a little strange, I, th I think it, like, hasn't forgotten... Oh no, I'm editing the wrong file. <laughs> right? Okay, well, let's go back. New glasses. These are my old glasses. Hi, Taylor. Well, nice to see you. Alright, now we're back. There's no more sounds, which is surprisingly a good thing. Oh! And we now, we can also explore the sustain and cycle modes. We haven't looked at them yet. They're also really, they're way more interesting. Um, so let's get into it. All right. Um, we have this. So, the fundamental thing we want to do is call this function called note. And we want to pass it two parameters, um, which we probably want to uh, sequence or we want to control dynamically. Um, let's plug in our classic four repeats of four divisions. Is that right? Three repeats, four instances of four divisions of a note. Um, let's see what happens. It'll be strange. To me, it's cool. So you can hear it phasing against each other, phasing against itself. So this is cool because this is like, it's never actually getting through all of its sequences. It's like, it's it's getting re-triggered before it's finished, it's set. But, um, why don't we speed it up? Like, why don't we say like 12 subdivisions? Okay, so I think what's happening is the the polyphonic allocator is a little if there's a note that's still playing, it won't take over that channel. Um, but I'm not sure why it's why some of them are inactive right now. But it's doing some cool stuff, so I'm not super mad about it. Um, I'm gonna try and set all the channels to be equal to, or to just like reset them all. And that should free up the polyphonic allocator. But it gets back into this state. 
It's really interesting. It's cool though, I like it. switching to sustain and that should give us some like nice decaying envelopes or decaying sequences the envelopes stay the same shape Almost certainly. I love that this is so cool hanging out with a group of people who know like how this stuff works when I don't. Because I'm just like, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. but it's doing something but basically I don't know I, I wish I had like a a more specific way of uh, explaining how it all works but for me a lot of the time it's just like um, trial and error really thinking about how the sustain mode works and to me it's just like a bit of a different it gives it like a bit of a groove feeling even though the notes are still very strict so this is back in, in transient mode it's much more like robotic and then 
sustain. It just lets some notes like have accents in different moments as they as they phase over each other. Um, and cycle mode we can try as well. Interesting. This is so bizarre. I really don't know what's going on. Like with the poly allocator, it's I'm not even sure if it's a if it's a bug or if I just don't know how this thing works yet. Um Some of the high-end kind of overlap cascade, there was a cool interval there. Alright, so... What's the time? 5.34. It's a bug, happened to me too. This is strange, I... I honestly haven't looked at the code for the geode mode since I made it, so... Yeah, if you if you have a, a reproducible bug, that's great. Easy to much much more easy to fix. Usually very easy to fix. Um, okay, so um, that's some stuff. Let's let's um, let's sequence it. So at the moment, we're just using these like fixed values. Um, I'm going to. I'm just going to turn just friends out of geode and see if this solves the problem when we get back in. Doesn't seem like it. Um, we might have to do the dreaded restart the case. Um, But slightly before that, the idea I want to pursue is these numbers setting that rhythm. I want I want to like change like make them happen on a, on a. I want them to cycle is what I'm trying to say. Let's bring the counter back. Um, if counter equals yeah, this counter is greater than four. And counter equals zero. The reason I want to do this is um, I, I want to kind of not trigger this every time there's a clock pulse coming in. I just only want to trigger it every fourth time. Uh, my God. I feel a. Uh, Everything's a little difficult right now. Counter equals... I'm still at zero, so the first iteration is one. I know it's a little strange. Um, and what I want to do is I'm just going to take these two numbers and let's let's do the same. So let's say divs um, is one, and let's say repeats is where they get faster as we go up, so we want to do more repeats as we go up higher. Let's just use the one one variable. So we're going to use divs, and this is going to be also let's say divs plus. If we just say divs, it'll be one more than the count, so it should be something. Um, can I quantize an input to generate the values? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's just do this for now, though. One less thing to worry about. Um, okay, and then after we do that, we're going to say divs equals divs plus one, and divs 
Oh wait, we can... <sighs> divs plot... Uh, let's just do it as we were going to do it. If divs equals um, 32, then divs equals 1. Okay, that's the, that's the script. Um, it's not going to work because it's gone into this weird state. I'm just going to turn down the volume before we restart this so that you don't die. Let's try again. What is going on? Are we sure it's an I2C issue? Maybe it's something else. Crow didn't connect. Oh no. Does this module have a reset button? God damn it. Sometimes this happens, I don't know why this is, but sometimes when you restart the case, Crow won't connect. There we go. Alright, let's try that again. It's not, it's still not working correctly. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh, okay. I think it's, I think that might be it. Okay. So it's working again. Now, this is still being very strange, but maybe that's because of how this script is running. Let's figure it out. If we said voice, so this is taking what we just wrote and applying it all to the first channel. It's got a weird, it's got something very strange going on. Um, but if we, we really want to have it cycle through. So, I'm going to cheat here just because the, the poly allocator doesn't seem to be working correctly. Um, so let's just make this vox, and then after that, vox equals vox plus one. I really don't like the way I'm writing this, um, but I don't know, so it goes. This is going to hopefully create some rhythms that get faster and create a weird interlocking thing. Oh, you're right. Yeah, okay, that's why. It'll take a little while to get going, but there we go. Uh, you can't, uh, unfortunately... Oh, yeah, okay, you're just saying that. Cool. Thank you. 
So this is something. I think if we made it happen twice as fast, this would get much more interesting. Something about this is very satisfying to me. Let's get this two times gain. Okay. And then finally, let's do quantize because it's getting close to six o'clock here, and this will make things weirdly more interesting, I think. So, this this uh, command jf.qt it interacts with these like trigger sequences that we're creating. Um, it's in general, it's off. And that's the same as you can you can give it the value zero, um, but basically what it's going to do is anything any one of these like trigger sequence events um, that we have queued up will get basically delayed until a multiple of a subdivision of the clock. It's going to sound a little strange, but I think it'll be interesting. So it's this quantize, that's what it's called. If I say one, I think it's gonna mean it's gonna quantize everything to be on the bar. Or on the beat. It might take a while. See, everything happened all at once. But we can say every two. So not everything's re-triggering now. So now we're on triplets. So it's basically a way of like allowing these sequences to run at their own pace, but kind of break them break them apart a bit, um, but also keep them locked in. So this is now eighth notes. So even though I might be using like a divide by seven in the in the voice section, um, that's going to cause like a, 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 a rhythm to come out of the notes rather than a, uh, rather than have them be actually like seven divisions of a bar. I think, yeah, 32 is the highest it's allowed to go. But you can kind of cheat this by flipping the, by changing the tick. But I want to I demonstrate this by, let's just go back to one channel, right? And let's not count as high. See? Okay, we don't even need to. This is, that's such a great example where, Yeah, there's like there's like rhythms that are like da 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 da, da, da that come through, and that's because the voice that we're kind of generating is like maybe five divisions or seven or something, but it's then being like shifted. It's it's been delayed until every thirty seconds. So if, you, if we think about it like this, um, 
Let's load, uh, what do we call it? Dynageo. We're going to go back to what we had saved before. Um, so I'm going to say, um, run Bower Bowery uh, Dynageode. Ooh, out of memory, nice. Really? Cool. Um, I just had to restart Crow because sometimes if you upload a script again and again, it can kind of like lose some memory somehow. So Just Friends hasn't been restarted in this moment. Um, and what that has done is it means we're still quantizing, even though we've changed the driving script, which is playing different tones. Without quantize, it's going to sound like this. So we get, it's like a much more chaotic kind of feel here. So we're just sending an LFO out, up at one, just to kind of keep it interesting. Um, turn it down a little bit. But if we turn quantize on, it like becomes like dance music somehow.
Fungo sound, yes, all the code is getting posted. I attach it to the uh, the YouTube uh, recording. Um, I don't know, I like this. This is fun. This is like, it's like I have a little group box. I don't know, I like it a lot. Is there anything else we need to show? Let's just try putting it in sustain mode and see what happens. one here. Let's put it in. Oh, I deleted it. I like these, like, the cool thing with, with quantize is you can use these odd divisions, um, but then give them a lot of repeats, and then the quantize kind of turns that into a rhythm that gets reset each time through. So it probably hasn't finished all 16 repeats by the time the counter has done the whole loop. So let's try that. subset of the channels. No, not currently. If you want to do it, you can write a really simple allocator um, in a crow script. I mean, the simplest thing is just a round robin. So you just like, kind of what we were doing before, you just increment the voice number each time through. Um, it doesn't take care of like dynamic stuff, like if you hold a note down for too long, but I honestly don't know how that re like, interacts with Geode anyway. Um, in synthesis mode, it maybe makes more sense. But no, unfortunately, it's just no.
So I'm just mixing this through the three sisters to do some like spectral mixing, that idea. So it's these three three sisters like pings in the low channel. And then in the center is this weird three sisters called Mac, uh, the like the Wiggly Raymond Scott thing. Which is going to kind of come in from the high end. And then in the very high is these two mangroves mixing together. This feels nice. I think I think that that might be it. That might be the whole episode. We didn't get to the telex input device, but uh next time. This has been really cool. I I really have never spent much time with Geode. I made it because I thought it would be interesting and then just like wasn't making music in, at the moment, at the time. Um, so thank you all for giving me reason to explore it. I'm super excited about these sounds. I think that uh, it's an interesting and different way of making rhythms where, especially when you get into the quantize, right? Like having envelopes that are like randomly or like very differently phased and then uh, quantizing them back onto a grid. To me, it's interesting. Um, before you go, what can you say about the next whiff? I'm really glad that you're learning something. I'm definitely learning stuff too, which has been cool. I'm also, it's also been a fun way to kind of stress test um, Crow and like different functionalities. Um, kind of gives me a reason to try and make something musical. Okay, with one, I'll give you one thing. Uh, it's that there is now a dedicated way of doing looping and delay. So you kind of set it up, it, it's, it's conceptually separated from the idea of the super long tape. Um, instead, it's like you have an option to do delay in a very specific uh, category. That's one thing. Um, but I, I'm not going to say anything else because there's some good stuff and some bad stuff and I don't know. That's the whole thing. We'll get there very soon. I'm like, I've been thinking it was done or hoping that it would be done for like a year. <laughs> Um, but it's really close. It's like, I think we're going to start beta testing next week. That's the plan. Uh, and that's what I'm going to work on after this stream. So with that in mind, I might get going. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in. It's been, uh, this has been a fun one. I'm going to upload it and, uh, we'll get these, get these spices in the mix. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. It's been a pleasure.